Okay, we're live with Teresa Schechter from Trixie Films. Let's give everybody a moment to put the title in. We're here in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> On a beautiful, finally some relief today, right? A beautiful summer day. More or less, yeah. And we're just seeing if anyone joins. Instagram is telling people to join. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. But we can jump in. So do what Instagram tells you to do. Yes, I have to do what Instagram <laughs> tells me to do. So we're here for a stoop visit with Teresa, and we're talking about... International Child Free Day. So first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself and your film and... Okay. Um, my name is Teresa Schechter. There are many subways going by, <laughs> because we are in Brooklyn. Um, I'm a documentary filmmaker. I'm currently working on a film called My So-Called Selfish Life, uh, which is about the assumption that all women will have kids and what it means to say no to that. And also what's at stake when we can't control our own reproductive lives uh, to live the life we think is best for us. And that'll be out next year. Yay! And it's the third in a series of feminist It is. It's films, the right? third in a trilogy of feature documentaries um, that I like to describe as disrupting what's considered most sacred about womanhood. So the third one is my peak. <laughs> it's disrupting motherhood. Awesome, awesome. And all that is good. <laughs> well, why is it important to make this film? I think it's important to make this film because, for many reasons, but making the choice to have a child is one of the biggest decisions you will probably make. It will affect the rest of your life in countless ways. And it's important to go into that knowing what, uh, what it involves, knowing how you feel about it, and making a decision for yourself on how you want to live your life. And I think a lot of people don't even know that they have a choice to not have a child, that that's okay, and that they're not weird, and that they're not going to never be loved, and they're not going to, you know, have no one to take care of them when they get old, and so many other things. Their <laughs> husband will leave them. So it's, it's a film that talks about options, and also about the pressure that is on women from the day we're born to become mothers, and to recognize that. Yeah, yeah. I love that you talk about uh, celebrating women's choices. It's it's not saying moms are bad or kids are bad. It's saying everybody has a right. And what's your favorite quote, your famous quote about motherhood? <laughs> Which favorite quote? Motherhood being mandatory. <laughs> All right. Well, we are brought up to feel like motherhood is, um, you know, feel like motherhood is mandatory. It's true. Here's another subway. Oh, uh, subway. Subway, thank you, Subway. But I want to say that... that <laughs> I'll just give it a second. Actually, I wanted to tell you, Teresa, who's joined. So we have Adam and Pauline on. Ooh, hello. Yay! We have I Am Power. Yes, um, Woo power. woo! And Violet. Nice. We have the Subway Social Club, which is a super cool club. And yeah, that was for you, Claire. <laughs> and uh, wow, we have a lot of people on. Subway. And uh, Sam Waterhouse, one of our moms. And Rookie Rojic, I hope I said that right, was their first joiner. So we got a bunch of people here. So again, we're, we're talking with Teresa Schechter, the filmmaker um, working on a feature documentary called My So-Called Selfish Life. And it is International Ch Child Free Day. So tell us. It is. Tell us about this, this, this holiday. Yeah, I, I would love to. I want to say one more thing. Yes. About why oh, yes. Hi, Melissa. Melissa, this, too. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> why this subject is important. I think we need to be able to make decisions about our lives. And in order to make good decisions, we need options. And we need good options and so there are options um, and we're fighting to make those options better and better and more and more known and so really people can pick the life that's right for them so international child free day is today august 1st it has been celebrated since 1974. it was created by a group called non the national organization for non-parents which um, put forth this crazy idea that it's okay if you don't want to have kids. This was in the 70s when a lot of social systems were being challenged 
And one of them was the idea that you got married and had children automatically. They were also associated with the zero population growth movement. So not only did it, they think that it was good for individuals, but also good for the planet. So that's how long we've been talking about population growth <laughs> and taking care of our planet, actually a little longer than that. And, and that's how long there's been an organized movement to talk about these issues. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. So uh, Melissa says, so excited to see you on Stoop Story, Teresa. You look awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> um, I haven't seen a lot of people in person a lot, so this is exciting <laughs> seeing Marge in person. <laughs> well, that's actually a it perfect a time to say, uh, ooh, that's a perfect time to say, um, to tell us, how's your pandemic been? Uh, that sounded cheesy. Um, how have you been... <laughs> How's your pandemic? No, how have you been coping with COVID throughout and now? I think overall, um, I have been really fortunate and privileged in my life with my husband. We can both work at home. Um, we're not facing financial hardships. We have a comfortable place to live and work. Our families are healthy and safe. Um, really, uh, we have been really fortunate. Um, the way I have felt COVID the most is editing the film. So we're in post-production, we're editing the film, we're trying to get it finished. I can't work in the same room as my editor, which is very difficult generally when you're editing a documentary, but especially difficult for the kind of films I make, which is like a constant back and forth collaboration. So we have figured out how to edit remotely, but it goes more slowly, <laughs> it's a little clunkier. And that's been a real, real challenge to, to actually do my work uh, properly. That's been the biggest hurdle I've had to surmount. And I'm not sure we have yet, <laughs> but we're working as fast as we can, I swear. That's challenging. Do you have any tips for filmmakers and creatives that are trying to work remotely like that, collaboratively? Well, for, for filmmakers, I would say we did figure out how to share screens on Zoom uh, and share the premiere screen. So my editor is working in Premiere software and she can actually share that and we can watch cuts together anytime we want. She doesn't have to export them and send them to me. So that's been a really good thing. We had to get some add-ons to make it work. Yeah. But that's been incredibly helpful. So, and just patience. Yeah. <laughs> just being patient and communicating. It's really much harder to communicate, of course, when you're not in the same room. So yeah. really taking the time to talk everything through. Yes. To check in with each other. So Bud Kenya says, wow, that's really challenging. Do, do you know Bud Kenya? I don't know. I, I, the name isn't <laughs> familiar, but I'm you so sorry if we know each other. I Well, because we requested to join, but I don't, I'm actually I've never done that before. And I'm a little nervous to mess this up in the middle. But in the future, please get in touch. We will do that. We will talk. I mean, um, everyone's welcome on my stoop, so <laughs> come on in. There's plenty of room six feet away from me. <laughs> you just, that was the perfect line. Yeah. Everyone's welcome on my stoop. As long as you're so, not, like, right next to me. And I'm not wearing a mask at the moment. I know, you see, I know. But I so, do have it right here. So I'm going to be, I'm going to move a little into racial injustice and how, you know, one of the other big themes of the day. Um, how are you feeling about how the movement is progressing and and your role as an activist or ally, you know, as well. Hi, um, all these new people. Wow. I think I, I really want to feel like six months from now, the movement will be even stronger and have even more allies. Um, I don't want it to feel like something that bubbled up in a time where we had more free time or something and got out there. I think it's, I have to keep reminding myself that it's ongoing and people out on, are out on the street every single day. Um, so that's sort of my, my hope and, um, dismantling white supremacy and, uh, the police are both pretty, uh, pretty high on the list, but we can't do it alone, but I, I would very much like to continue being an ally. Um, Cold for the subway. Subway. <laughs> One thing that's been really important for the film is putting a reproductive justice lens on the choice to be child free. I think child free spaces tend to be overwhelmingly white and it's really nice to see more and more women of color, uh, black women, starting their own conversations around their own experiences. 
excuses around not having kids because, like I said, it's a very white space. So we need to fix that. And um, so I'm trying to amplify their own stories and their own social media uh, places and just to, to, to get more of that. But also, you know, in the film, I think it's a really interesting situation when you are, for example, if you're a black woman who doesn't want children and maybe has even gotten your tubes tied, that is a very difficult situation to be in, uh, in terms of being in your community. And we have a couple of women in the film talking about that. When you have a history of your people facing genocide, um, mm. communities being destroyed, and a uh, hundred years of um, reproductive oppression through forced sterilization and other means following uh, many hundred years of reproductive oppression through slavery and forced birth. So it's a history we have to talk about and it's a history we have to talk about how it impacts us today. But I think reproductive justice is just um, key to this conversation. Wow, that's, it's, it's so crucial that you're addressing that. And actually, so Bud Kenya says, actually, I'm from Portland, Oregon. My God, you guys have faced a huge military presence there. I'm interested to know how others are living these days. Um, and then this conversation is so deeply connected to our history in this country. Yes, yes. Yes, it's true. Um, Child Free Tanya joined as well, by the way. Hi, Hi Tanya! Tanya. <laughs> um, I also want to say that all of the stories I'm trying to tell about black women, about women of color, um, everything I know I've learned from women of color. Like, this is not something that I have just sort of figured out. I have, I have learned this all from women of color, from black women who step forward to tell their stories, to write books, to... I, I'm really grateful for all of that and for helping me understand uh, just the, the challenges and the issues. Yeah, and so what can we, I want to say, look forward to what, what, from the film, and when is it coming out? Next year. Next year? Yeah. And tell us how, tell everybody how they can find out more about the film. Sure. Um, you can go to our website, which is myselfishlife.com. Uh, there you will find um, links to social media. You will find a lot of videos that people have filmed about their own child-free experiences. You'll find resources, and you will find a link to support the film because documentary films are very expensive and we appreciate uh, anyone who feels that they're able to do this right now, any amount of donation. Um, like $5, will get us $5 further. <laughs> now much closer to a finished film. Yes. Um, so for folks that feel like that's something they can do right now, we would really appreciate it. Oh, uh, Child Free Tanya saying so, so excited for the film debut. I think we all are. Um, and yeah. yes, and, and having helped on the Kickstarter a little bit, I know, how much did we raise with the Kickstarter? We raised almost $46,000 on Kickstarter, which paid for all of our filming, all the filming we did and the traveling we did to find people all over North America, and the beginning of the edit, the beginning of the rough cut. Um, thanks to a really generous grant from the Canada Council for the Arts, we have had money to support us through our rough cut, and now we're on a next, the next stage to, to finish editing the film and do all those other things that nobody thinks about, like uh, composing the score, uh, doing all the animation we're going to need, uh, doing color correction, uh, audio mix, all of those post-production things. And man, everybody wants to be paid, which is understandable. <laughs> so we yeah, have that's to raise madness. the money. To, it's madness. <laughs> that's madness. So we have to raise the money to pay all these very, yeah. very talented people. So our, two our questions. First, our first siren. I yeah, first siren. But we have a uh, essential workers all around us. Um, we have a question. I'll wait for. We're right near Methodist Hospital, actually. <laughs> Just a little glimpse of New York. We. Um, better than much of the country. You know why? Because we're wearing our fucking masks and we're keeping our social distance. Yes, we are and wearing we take our this masks. very seriously because we know what we 
we've been through and what we can be through it go through again that's right that's right it's real and it's it happened here and it's happening it's very real it's very real um a couple more questions so melissa's asking how has the black lives matter movement affected your film i know you touched on it a little bit but um well we were working in that direction already because some of our subjects and experts are black women and so they uh get to educate me and the viewers of the film i think one thing we're trying to do now is to um, take the history that we're working with and bring it into the present and tie it into the present reproductive justice movement, which uh, encompasses uh, having children, not having children, having safe deliveries, because we know that black women have the highest maternal mortality rate in the country, having um, care during pregnancy, having postpartum care, having safe neighborhoods to raise your children in. Um, this is all encompassed under reproductive justice. So we're actually right now working on how we can bring all of the, the history of this into the present and tie it into our um, characters' lives in the present. That's fantastic. Wow, we have so many people on right now. This is our biggest live yet, Teresa. Yes. I just want you to know that. that. Hashtag child free. Hashtag child free, yeah. which I didn't even use yet. Um, we have people from all over the country. That's awesome. Hey, Justin. Hi, everyone. Hey, Christina. Hey, That's Justin. Um, so we're, we'll wrap up in a minute. I just Is there anything you want to share? I, I know folks, you know, as the movement has gone on, we're over two months of daily protests with the Black Lives Matter movement and really also um, defending rights for all people of color. Um, what, uh, you know, especially for us white chicks out here, um, if you have any, not to put you on the spot, if you have any suggestions for how to be a good ally or resources or anything you want to share on that. I think one thing that's been really important for me and especially working in the child free sphere is really um, working uh, as hard as I possibly can to amplify the voices of women of color and black women um, to find them. Because as I said, the child free space is a very white one. So to look for women who are doing this for everyone or specifically for their own communities um, and to be able to uh, repost their stories, to help promote their events, um, anything I can do to make this space a more inclusive and diverse space because it's not like our child-free space that we're letting other people into. These conversations are happening everywhere but I think it would be nice to have them all together. So that's kind of where I'm at. Absolutely, absolutely. Awesome, well, if you have anything else to add, anyone have last questions? I love this group, it's very, very enthusiastic. <laughs> that's us. Yeah, that's, <laughs> oh yes, Bud Kenya you. did correct me that it wasn't as bad in Portland as, interesting, as the media, thought. it says the media exploited our protest in, the, in that way. Interesting, um, yeah. interesting. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The media does. The media goes a little crazy, gets a little dramatic. Um, well, thank you so much for talking to us. So everybody, remember to go to... Um... MySelfishLife.com. <laughs> we have a very active Facebook page with over 8,000 people on it. Wow. It is really fun and informative. Come join us. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Not so much on Twitter, to be perfectly yeah. honest. <laughs> um, and, uh, and there's just a lot of resources out there for you. So I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, and actually you can share your own uh, story. Yes, about, yeah. yes, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, so we have something so. called Selfish Selfies, which are one-minute videos that anyone can submit about their own issues around making the choice not to have children or wrestling with the choice not to have children or anything like that. Tell us about your own life in a minute, and we would be very excited to post it on social media and give it a home on our website. We already have, I think, 24 videos on the website. And, and they're really interesting. They're from, really interesting. From all genders, from all races, from... Genders, and also international. We have a couple from... We have three videos uh, from Africa. Sorry, two. One's about to be posted. Canada, the United States. Where else That's are great. our videos from? I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, awesome. you can see if you go to the website. <laughs> All right, thanks, Teresa. Yay! And, uh, yes, and we want to tell your stories, too. It's Stoop Story, so if you want us to come visit your Stoop and interview you or 
you want to send in your own Stoop story uh, or you want to be photographed as part of a art documentary series, let us know. All right. Thanks for joining, everybody. Bye. Have a great weekend. Stay safe.